Hello and thank you for watching the third lesson of chapter 8, which is 8.3 IPv6 packet. Now in the screen, as you can see, I have them side by side IPv6 and IPv4 packet header, and uh, we're going to compare them. And straight away you can tell that IPv6 is a lot more simple than simplified than IPv4. Anyway, around 1990s or early 1990s, Internet Engineering Task Force, they were starting getting concerned with IPv4. They were thinking, okay, well, you know, there's some issues with IPv4 as well as maybe the address space is not enough. And this activity led to development of new protocol, which was IPv6. And uh, in class, usually I get students asking me questions, okay, well, what's the IPv5 there? Why are we moving straight to IPv6? There is there an IPv5? And yes, there was. There was an IPv5. It was known with a different name. It was known as a streaming protocol name. And it was used for streaming voices. So it was experimental. It was never released. So we really, um, that's the reason why we're going straight from IPv4 to IPv6. And there were some issues with IPv4. For example, the main issue was the address space because we have only 32 bits. And with 32 bits, they will give you about just above 4.3 billion addresses, which is not enough. Definitely not enough. And because of that, they developed the NAT network address translation and carved some addresses to become private, which would not be routable on the internet. And then these private addresses, we can reuse them from everybody can reuse them. Uh, but as soon as they want to go to the internet where everybody meets, then they have to be trained, uh, well, they have to be translated to public address. And this involved the protocol network address translation, where we translate private addresses to public addresses. Well, we don't have to have that in the IPv6 because we have enough IPv6 addresses. With 128 bits, we can have three over 314 decillion. That's a lot of addresses, which we're gonna see in the next screen. How many addresses are there? And we have improvement packet handling in IPv6 compared to IPv4. It's a much, much better protocol. Anyway, we're going to go through the fields now. As you can see, the first field is the same. The name and location is the same. And uh, in IPv4, is a version and same as IPv6. And in binary, for the being 0100, that says an IPv4 packet header. In IPv6, is 0110 in binary. So that will be 6, explain, explain, explaining there's IPv6. And the next field is internet header length. Now this field, we don't need to have it in IPv6 because this header is always 40 bytes. We know how big is the header, so we don't need to identify the header. And so there is re been removed that field. The next field is called differentiated services in IPv4. In differentiated services, if you remember, this was for quality of service, quality of service, or the priority of the packet. And um, in IPv6 is the same, but the name has changed from differentiated services. We call it traffic class in IPv6. It's again for quality of service. Then we have a new field in IPv6 called flow label. This doesn't exist in IPv4. And it's, it does provide the special services for real-time applications. It will inform routers and switches not to reorder the packets to keep them on the same flow. Then uh, in IPv4, we had a total length, which is a new field called IPv6. So the name has changed, but it's exactly the same as what uh, total length does. Uh, payload length includes the header of IPv6, including the payload. The payload is underneath here. So when in there, we're going to have a layer 4 header, which is a transport layer header. And we're going to have our data in our payload. So that's part of the payload. And that explains how big is this. The next field in IPv6 is the next header. Now, next header is the same as a protocol field in IPv4 and identifies the next header, a layer 4 information. For example, this will identify what is in layer 4. Is it, for example, TCP or maybe it's UDP or SPF or ICMP or whatever it is layer 4 information there. And the next field in IPv6, we have a hop limit, which makes more sense. This limits the packet, how many hops can go through. So at every hop, one is reduced, the value. And then um, when it reaches zero, the packet will be discarded. That's same as the time to live in IPv4. And then some fields here, that, for example, the three fields here, they are gone. Because all these in IPv4, they talk about fragmentation, fragmentation. And in IPv6, we don't have that fragmentation. So that's why we don't have any of these fields. As well as in IPv6, they don't have a header checksum. 
Next field is the source IP address and then destination IP address. Same as IPv4. But in IPv4, remember that's 32 bits uh, each. And uh, in IPv6, it's going to be 128 bits each. So 128. Okay. Now, with the 32 bits, you can see that it does provide approximately 4.3 billion addresses in IPv4. And all these addresses, 4.3 billion addresses, are not all usable. There's a lot of reserved addresses and so on, which is not enough anyway. In IPv6, with 128 bits, with 128 bits, we can have three over 340 undecillion addresses. And that's a lot of addresses. We can see one undecillion has 36 zeros behind of it. And we have 30, 340. So this is roughly equivalent to every grain of sand on Earth. So you can imagine how many IPv6 addresses we have. So as we talked, the IPv6 header is a simplified header than compared to IPv4, but it's not smaller. And we said that it's always 40 bytes. Now there is two distinct types of headers in IPv6. We have a main regular header, which is this one here. This is going to be our main regular header. But we can have an extension header as well. The extension header, it is used. It's optional, but you can use it if you want for fragmentation or security to support mobility, authentication, ESP, and much more. Thank you for watching lesson 8.3, IPv6 packet. This is of chapter 8, Network Layer. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici. Bye bye.